Right here we have a brand new smartwatch, the Garmin Venue SQ, and I think this one's going to be bad news for the Apple Watch. So not only is this selling at less than half the price of the Apple Watch, it has three times the battery life, uh, it has ac very accurate heart rate and GPS tracking that I'll show later on in the video, and it has offline Spotify music that again, we don't yet see on the Apple Watch. So we have a lot going on here. I'm gonna dive in and show you guys everything you need to know about this watch, the Garmin Venue SQ, and also what's different about this compared to last year's Garmin Venue. All right, so I wanna start off with a physical tour and right off the bat, it, the design kind of reminds you of an Apple Watch, kind of the same size, kind of the same dimensions there, the rectangular design, but it doesn't have a rotating crown on the side. Instead, we just have two buttons. On the front, we have an AMOLED screen and a relatively thick bezel going all the way around it. But for the most part, the screen background is going to be black, so you won't really notice where the bezel is. Uh, but regardless, it's something to note. Now, the AMOLED screen means you have a pretty bright display. It's going to have vibrant colors, and it's much better than most other Garmin displays out there. So that definitely makes it a little bit more like an everyday smartwatch and not just a fitness watch. Now we have a really nice bezel all the way around the entire watch, the gold design here. There's a couple different colors I'll show you on the screen right now. And this watch actually is two different versions. So I said it's half the price of the Apple Watch. Uh, Apple Watch obviously has a huge range of prices, but assuming you're looking at the $400 watch, this one starts at $199. So there are two different versions of the watch. The first one is $199, and then if you wanna spend an extra $50, you will be able to get music on here, which I highly recommend doing for most people just to be able to run without your phone I think is half the point of a smartwatch in the first place. Looking on the right side, like I said, we have two buttons there. We don't have anything that rotates, but it's a pretty simple interface, so I don't find that that's really holding me back. On the back, you'll see that we have the standard Garmin setup with the heart rate sensors. I'll talk about what it's able to do in a second. And then above that, we have our little charging unit. So it clicks in, it's not wireless charging. That's a small drawback for me because when I'm traveling, I will have to bring a charger. The battery life on this, however, is pretty good. So if you're traveling for a weekend, you definitely won't need the charger with a five to six day battery life from my experience here. It, you know, it definitely has a decent battery. The straps on here are easily replaceable, but I think these are really comfortable and I like the design of these straps. Uh, I can wear them if my wrist is wet, if I'm swimming, it never really gets too uncomfortable from my experience. Now you might notice that this watch does not have any microphone or speaker, which means you won't have a voice assistant, you won't be able to field phone calls on here, but you will be getting notifications by the haptic motor on there uh, and displayed on the touch screen as well, so you can reply with quick replies or whatever you're trying to do. So as far as connectivity and transponders go in this watch, we have Wi-Fi to download songs for Spotify uh, and to download different apps for this. We also have Bluetooth to connect to your phone, but also Bluetooth to connect to headphones or earbuds, so if you wanna go for a run and leave your phone at home, you could listen to music just off of your watch, a really nice feature to have. We have NFC on here, so if you're going for a run and you wanna stop and buy a Gatorade at the store, you could just walk up and tap your watch on there and purchase you know, your, your drink or whatever you're trying to buy. And of course, we have GPS and heart rate data on here for accurate workout tracking. So with that being said, I wanna get into some testing right now to show you guys just how accurate the workout tracking actually is. All right, so I have right here one of the workouts I did with the Garmin Venue SQ. And what I really like about Garmin is that I can actually go on their web application and see even more data than I can see on my phone. And so looking at the accuracy of the GPS, first of all, we can zoom in. This was not really an especially long run, but you can see that it was very accurate and there was no drunk wandering almost at all. So just some slight meandering back and forth, but still within the road because I was on the sidewalk. Sometimes I was running on some of the back roads. And for the most part, it was extremely accurate. The only discrepancy I really see is like right around here, it cut that corner a little bit short. And then over here, it had a little bit of confusion there as well. Uh, but it does, it gives you a heat map here. So it shows you, I was doing some sprint intervals on the back half of this run uh, and a more consistent pace in the beginning. So I think that was a really cool thing that it does right there. And then as we scroll down, you can see the other things that it's actually showing you. And looking at the heart rate compared to a known accurate device, I found that this was really accurate on almost every part of the entire run, with the exception of right here it plateaued at 200 for a little bit, uh, which was slightly higher than my actual heart rate. And in the beginning, this little dip was slightly slower. It should have actually come up a little bit more like that. But otherwise, it was very, very similar to the correct heart rate for the entire run. I was very impressed with the accuracy of both the heart rate sensor and the GPS on the Garmin Venue SQ. Now, looking at the app right here, you can see that this is the Garmin Connect app and it shows you a lot of your health analytics. You can actually rearrange it, but there's a ton of data here, very digestible as well. So you can go down and see how many steps you did today, how many calories you, the estimated calories you burned. 
And if you go into any one of these, so for example, my sleep, it, oh, it shows you a ton of other information. You can see like your pulse OX, your respiration, uh, and just like a lot more information as you want to dive into any one of these metrics. So it's really nice how easy that is. On the top right there, you can also go into your device. And down here, you'll see you have some quick settings here, but the majority of the settings are actually going to be uh, not here. Instead, they're going to be, if you go to applications and more right here, it'll open up the Garmin IQ app. So you can see right here, it should be opening that. Uh, it'll bring us over to this app here. And this is the app where you can do most of the app adjustments within your watch. So if you want to add widgets, you want to add watch faces, you want to add some other like Spotify or Deezer, for example, across the top, you see that's how you're going to be sorting them. Uh, so it's really easy to do. And then if you go down to the bottom right, you can also change some other things. Like I think you're allowed to have 32 apps slash widgets on here. Uh, so, you know, that's a reasonable amount of space considering there really aren't 32 apps I want. Uh, but most of them are really watch faces anyway. All right, guys, let's take a quick look at the interface. And so starting off with the watch face here, you can actually change this in the Garmin IQ app. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but as we swipe up and down, it goes through an entire loop. So we're going to end up at this one right here. So remember this one. And as we go down, you'll see that first we have the my day thing and you can go through these widgets change uh, based on, you know, whatever you want to add here, you can change them in the app as well. And so we have a bunch of different things like your heart rate tells you your high and your low, your body battery, and just like a bunch of other things like that. We also have some calendar reminders for what's happening today and tomorrow. You get your notifications on here and notifications also pop up on the screen. You can reply to them if you want with quick replies. You're not going to be typing out full replies. Uh, I skipped this one accidentally. This is Spotify right here as well. So you can go to Spotify and actually within settings, you can change the volume. You can change what the output is. So which earbuds it's on. Uh, and so we can hit a little back button. Then we can go down and you'll see that it keeps bringing you through a ton of different widgets. I have a lot set right here. This is the last one, the one that you're supposed to remember. And it brings us back to here. So that's how you know it is actually a full loop. And if we swipe left or right from any of these, nothing actually happens. But if we press and hold the bottom right button, uh, you'll end up with the settings for whatever you're on. So press it once to go back, press that little button to go back or to go home. And then if we press the top button, it brings us into kind of like our apps, but it's weirdly enough, including our workouts as well. So you see that's a lot of workouts and then like a my car one uh, that I added also. And if you swipe down, it shows you even more of them. So more workouts and also like a navigation app that I added as well. So it's interesting that those are mixed together here. I'm not sure why Garmin chose to do that. But if we tap and hold the top button, it gives us our quick menu right here. And we have, this is really what I'm doing the most of. So we have uh, Garmin Pay on the top right if you wanna set up a credit card with this. We have Spotify in the bottom left. We have some settings to change the brightness uh, to go and like find my phone is the thing on the top. So if we tap that, my phone will ring. And that's essentially everything in the interface of this watch. All right, so I think by now you guys are probably getting a good idea of what this watch was designed for, what the specs are, and how well it actually works. But I want to get into some of the nuances, the pros and cons that I found after wearing this watch for about a week now. Now, starting off with the pros, the first one, I think that's an obvious one here, is offline Spotify is a really nice feature to have. I love being able to run and just have Spotify on my wrist instead of downloading MP3 files uh, because so many other watches like Apple Watches and Google Wear OS watches and just, you know, Fitbit watches, so many other ones out there can't handle offline Spotify. So this Garmin watch here having that is definitely a huge plus there. Now other ones, I really like the clean, simple aesthetic. This watch is not trying to do anything too crazy. It's not big. It's really a lightweight watch on your wrist. It's very comfortable. And I think it does a great job of just working. So when you put the watch on, it just works. It tracks your workouts. It does what you want it to. And it's not really that complicated. So I think that's definitely a good factor on this watch because a lot of people have been saying that to me, I've been getting a lot of comments and a lot of friends asking me like, hey Mike, I wanna watch, uh, I just want, I wanna track workouts, I wanna listen to music, I want it to be accurate, and I want notifications, but I don't really care about having like Siri on my watch or Google Assistant, I don't need to answer phone calls on my watch, like what should I get? And I mean, this watch kind of satisfies all of those criteria really well. So this is going to be a really easy watch to recommend, but of course there are some drawbacks you should be aware of. So the first one is that Spotify downloads, at least from my experience, take a really long time. So I wouldn't expect to be walking out the door and say, oh wait, let's download a Spotify playlist and in 30 seconds have 100 songs. It's going to take a lot longer than that, uh, depending on your internet speed and depending on you know a bunch of other factors. For me to download like 150 songs, it took around an hour or, or even longer. So that, that's a pretty long time. But if you, you know, if you set that and you let it go and then you run later on in the afternoon, you know, obviously it's not going to be a problem. 
The second thing is that the interface on here is just a little bit less curated. I think some people don't care about that because they're looking for a watch that just simply works. Uh, but I think they could refine it a little better to make it just make a little bit more sense. I think some things are located kind of in a weird place, like I said before, where you have the workouts and the apps are in the same location. Just like it just, that kind of stuff just seems a little strange to me. And then of course, like I said, it doesn't have wireless charging. For some people, that's not a big drawback at all. Uh, for me, I travel a lot, so that's kind of something I don't really like to see. And then really the last one is that it does require multiple apps on your phone. So having the Garmin IQ app and the Garmin Connect app, I wish Garmin would just kind of get their software together and just figure things out on that end and just make one like clean, robust app. So overall guys, that is the Garmin Venue SQ. Who is this watch really for? I think I explained it earlier on in the video. It's really for anybody who is looking to have just a basic everyday smartwatch that they can wear for notifications. Uh, they can track their workouts accurately and reliably. They can track their sleep. They have a nice app to really give them meaningful analytics from their workouts. And they want a longer battery life at a much lower cost than the Apple Watch. But of course, if you're somebody looking for a lot of apps out there, if you wanna have Uber on your watch, if you wanna have uh, like a voice assistant, you wanna field phone calls, all of that stuff you're not going to be doing with this watch. And if that's the case, I highly recommend checking out my watch playlist. I'll, I'll link it down below and I'll pop it up on the top of the screen there. So you can check that out because there are a lot of other watches that would be a better fit for you. But for, I think a pretty large crowd, this is a really great watch and I, I think I recommend it pretty highly for those specific individuals. So comment down below, let me know what you think of this watch, if they have exactly what you want or if you're looking for other features. I wanna hear from you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.